had National Signing Day last week. Fun, fun day. I absolutely love National Signing Day. Uh, but there are some kind of... It's a dark side to National Signing Day. There's a dark side to recruiting. You know, we've had coaches changes like crazy this year. And it's always like this every offseason. Alabama, they recently just lost an offensive coordinator and a few other uh, offensive position uh, coaches. They've left. Oregon had a complete sweep of new coaches, and then some of those coaches left. Their wide receivers coach left. You had uh, a strength and conditioning coach suspended. You've had other coaches just leave or get fired. Florida also, LSU, among they're among several other schools that have gone through coaching changes, and that's just part of the business, right? The, the business of college athletics, uh, of those student athletes that don't get paid. It's a different discussion. Now, a lot of these assistant coaches and position coaches are some of the main recruiters for their school. It's not always the head coach that's going out there to make the recruiting. A lot of these position, position coaches are traveling state to state, coast to coast, trying to get the most uh, elite talent they possibly can on their team. And they're recruiting them, and sometimes promises are made that are never fulfilled, whether that's due because the athlete never fulfills a potential, or when he gets there, things happen, but there's also a thing that happens and it's not really talked about. And that's when coaches leave for other jobs and, or just get fired for no reason. Kind of like what we saw at LSU. You, you now have new Orleans high schools that are boycotting LSU to even talk to them, to allow their athletes to talk to them, to help them in recruiting because they didn't like how a running backs coach. And I believe another position coach uh, ended up getting demoted and then fired. They didn't like that. And that running back coach, I'm sure, recruited several players. Some of those even committed because they like that relationship they built with that coach along with the school. Of course, I'm not saying that kids are uh, you know, not understanding what the school is or committing to that university in itself. But those kids, once they sign that national letter of intent, once they fax it in to that university, it's a contract. They're locked in. Even if they're not early enrollees and they, they sign it February 1st, that first Wednesday, they send it in and they still got to complete their semester, their last semester of high school and they enroll, whether it's the summer or the fall, that kid's locked in. And if their assistant or position coach that they felt so strongly with and developed that relationship with ends up leaving or gets fired, and that coach can go on to go get another job or does get another job. While that student athlete, that recruit, is now stuck at that university. And I know what you're thinking. No, he can transfer. Yeah, he can transfer. But guess what? Because of NCAA rules, unless he somehow gets a waiver, which majority of those waivers never get uh, approved, he will then have to sit out his freshman season at that other school. Could potentially redshirt. So there's that. But he loses his entire year because a coach left and that coach gets to coach immediately. He doesn't have to sit out. He gets to go and coach while that student athlete has to sit back and watch his freshman year go by. It's wrong. It really is. And there's a lot of other things that are wrong. Now, of course, uh, uh, you know, an argument to this as well. That's why you commit to that university. You've got to see yourself there for three to four years and You've got to ask yourself, well, if that coach leaves, will I still be happy here? And that's absolutely true. I'm not denying that, and I'm not arguing against that. But at the same time, there should be a clause in that national letter of intent that says if X coach leaves, that I, the student athlete, should be able to transfer to another program and not have to sit out and lose a year, redshirt or not, and play now granted if i i can be okay and i would i'd be fine if they said okay we'll do that but you can't transfer to our conference schools it's a step in the right direction and i can understand that you wouldn't want to recruit that a top wide receiver in the state of oklahoma or wherever goes to ou that wide receivers coach goes and becomes an oc at nebraska or something 
and he wants to go and play for Texas or something. I can see where it's like, okay, no, no, no. You you can't go and go play in Texas or go to any other Big 12 school. But you could go to Nebraska. You could go join them. That should be fine. That should be approved. And I, I get, even if it's a little stretch where it says you can transfer anywhere else, but it can't be in conference and it can't be a school that we play that's already scheduled for the next three years. I, I can be okay with that. I, I can be okay with that. But as long as it allows that student athlete, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, redshirted or not, should be allowed to transfer to another program without having to sit out a year. It's only fair. Coaches can leave. Coaches make their money off of all these players anyways. So why not allow that player to go for the best thing? I, I To me, that sounds normal. That sounds like a common sense type of thing. But yet, it, it's, it doesn't look like that'll happen. Uh, there's something else I had on my list here. Uh, so one of the examples, and it's not only just recruits. Uh, it's not just incoming freshmen or transfers from JUCO or wherever. Uh, there's also a time uh, when a, a player at the University of Miami, I believe he was a sophomore or a junior, maybe even a senior. Doubt he was a senior. Actually, I'm going to go sophomore or junior. Was there Mark Rich at the time was a Miami coach. He gets fired, and he ends up going to, or excuse me, at Georgia. Gets fired, goes to Miami. Student athlete at Georgia says, you know what? He's from the state of Florida as well. He And I think he might have uh, been from Miami. He wants to transfer to go play for Mark Rich. Go to the U. Georgia and Miami, not in the SEC, not Miami's on the SEC. So they're not in the same conference. And they're not scheduled to play each other within the next three years. New head coach Kirby Smart comes in at Georgia and denies that student athlete to transfer to any school in the state of Florida, including the University of Miami. I get it if he was saying, hey, I want to go to play for the Florida Gators. Well, we're in the SEC. It's a rivalry. I can't, I can't allow you to do that. You can go to Miami. You can go to FAU, FIU, wherever. You can go elsewhere, but you can't go to Florida. I understand that it's in conference. But for him to deny a transfer of this upperclassman to go to Miami, to go follow his coach who recruited him and developed a relationship with him, and you're not playing them at all, unless somehow playing a bowl game, which you can't control that anyways, and you deny his transfer. And this guy wasn't, I don't even think he was a starter. That's a problem. That is a problem which needs to be fixed. Hopefully student athletes can one day get a clause in that national letter of intent that says uh, that they would be allowed to transfer without having to sit out. And it has to be a realistic thing. It's not like, hey, I didn't get playing time, so like this coach promised. It has to be just because they had a relationship with that coach, that coach left, their position coach or the head coach, and they want to leave. And it can't be in conference. That's fine. That's fine. I can deal with that. But again, I'm not denying or crossing out the argument that the recruits need to commit to that university because they do. They need to be able to say, if that coach leaves, my position coach and or the head coach, if they leave, will I still be happy here for the next three to four years? Recruits have to believe that, have to think and and think that completely through. And if they do, but they still want to follow that coach, I think they should be able to. Let me know on Twitter at Short Sports Show and become a fan on Facebook, the Short Sports Show.